So hi everyone and welcome to the last episode of season one of the Biome podcast. So today we're with me, Emma, Roby and Kate. Um, so very, very exciting. Roby, do you want to tell us a little bit about what we're going to talk about today? Yeah, absolutely. So it's very exciting. We've got Kate Sheridan here. She is our third content producer and she is going to be joining us on the next kind of 2021 phase of the Brian project, you could call it. Um, so we're going to be starting a new season of the podcast. Uh, this time we're going to be focusing on some bigger issues, uh, things that, you know, we really need three people to just kind of discuss and really get into the nitty gritty of. Um, but today we're just going to have a quick sum up video, kind of like two stars and a wish, but I don't know if I can call it that. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go through a quick video um, of what we really enjoyed the most about the Biome Project podcast season one, um, our kind of filming highlights, what we really enjoyed this year, and what we're really, really excited with for 2022. And also just to say, like, we'd love to hear your comments as well, because um, our opinion will obviously be different to you guys, our listeners and viewers. So comment below, let us know what your favourite moments, episodes, videos, whatever, <laughs> let us know what you think. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if people feel the same as you guys, as the people who recorded the podcast, and me as a listener, <laughs> whether people feel the same as me. I'm, I think maybe we differ slightly, because some of the ones that got less views, Robbie and I are like, oh my god, yes, that was the best podcast, <laughs> and we're like, oh, maybe not everyone was interested. Do you know, my favourite ever review was from, I think, a, a, maybe, I think it was the sister of one of our university friends, and it was on the Curlew podcast, and they said, yeah, the Bayern podcast, it's really, really good, but Curlew's bit niche and I was like that's the review I kind of want <laughs> I mean we're very niche that's for sure yeah um, specialist niches uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so what would you say Roby has been kind of like your highlight from from season one um I think from season one my okay my favorite episode was probably the bear episode with the brown bear and the cave bear actually i'm not quite sure why i think because because it was a bit out there and you know no one's seriously thinking about reintroducing the brown bear in the wild in the uk it was fun because you could kind of go a bit outside of the box you don't have to kind of worry that you're gonna be um, misquoting anyone you know a, a current project that's happening so i really enjoyed the the bear episode because it was a massive kind of what if and it was it was such a kind of interesting thought exercise trying to figure out okay if we brought brown bears back to scotland what would happen how would you do it who would you have to get involved and i just really enjoyed thinking through that process i think we got a lot of um comments from that as well mm. um like even family members being quite concerned that um, <laughs> we were planning on releasing bears like into the high street <laughs> it was yeah an interesting episode Interestingly, that was also my favourite episode to listen to. Ooh. Um, I think for a similar reason, because it was so out there. And I think as a kind of animal lover, I'm a bit like both of you and that my gut reaction is like, yes, bring them all back. I'd love <laughs> to just have wild animals everywhere. But it was interesting to listen to an episode and kind of come to the same conclusions you guys did that I think, Roby, you gave it a four out of ten for reintroduction. Yeah. And it was like, actually... <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do this. And it was a really interesting episode because you, you really thought about it and thought it through and kind of came to the conclusion that actually we're not ready for it. Which I think was I, it was quite fun because I, when we were planning season one um, and we were like, right, we're going to do, we're going to focus on reintroductions because it's really big at the moment. And each, you know, each episode we're going to be like, yeah, we should absolutely bring it back. We well, bring back Le Lynx and Bison and everything. And then uh, I think also the Wolverine episode. We yeah, found, I think Emma, Bears and Wolverine. We were like, hmm. <laughs> actually this might be a bad idea maybe we shouldn't do this yeah it's interesting i went to a lecture um once i think it was at the royal geographical society in london actually and it was about rewilding the uk and they had a powerpoint and they put up they said you know put your hand up if you want to see the uk rewilded and most of the people in the room were young conservationists and most people put their hands up and they said okay put your hand down once you're happy that the uk is rewilded and they went through all these different species and they started with smaller species and sort of insects, amphibians, and they moved on to birds and mammals. And so many people didn't put their hands down until they started seeing these bigger mammals back, hmm. things like wolves, bison, and even bears. And you realize that 
there are a lot more niche species that are better candidates for reintroduction than these big mammals. But people don't, when you hear the word wild, you think of big Grizzlies carnivores. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what was your favourite or m- most enjoyable episode, Emma? Either to make or to listen back and think, oh, that was interesting. <laughs> I mean, I think the, oh, there are so many, but <laughs> the two that I really, really enjoyed, I feel like we got a lot out of them, was the two interviews that we did with Stan mm. Smith from the Wild Bleen Project and Tom Ovenden, who was doing a Masters in, in Lynx reintroduction. Because, I mean, as much as we, we love researching this and talking about it, talking to someone who's actually sort of an expert in what they're doing and getting a different opinion... I, I just, I loved it, talking, getting to talk to them um, and going into, like, with, with Roby, with um, the Tom Ovenden one. It was, a, you you watched a YouTube video about his master's project and yeah. then really excitedly <laughs> messaged me and was like, oh my goodness, can we please talk to him? And just the, uh, the process of following that through and talking to him about all the graphics and the maps that he'd used and modelling and same with Stan Smith just talking about the the bison coming back to the UK. I really, really loved those interviews. I mean, there is that to be said. This Biome Project podcast has allowed us to go on a massive bison tangent, which I feel <laughs> like we were already quite deep down anyway. Um, but interestingly, the thing... I, I, I completely agree with you. The, the two interviews have been incredible. Um, both because it kind of allows us to kind of nerd out and say, oh my God, you're actually working on this. Tell us more. Um, but it, what really stood out to me about the Tom Ovenden one, which is why I messaged you saying, guys, we've got to get, get this guy on, um, is, you know, there's so often, and we're kind of guilty of this as well, a massive divide and a characterization between all the conservationists want the animals back and all the local people and the stakeholders and the farmers and the state owners don't want it back. But what I really liked about... Um, uh, his talk and his master's project is that he get was as balanced as you could be went through the evidence as a scientist and came out with the conclusion that in his opinion we're not ready for lynx yet and so I really really liked kind of his process of following the evidence through and drawing the most balanced and logical conclusion from it um, which I thought was you know quite often quite missing in the current conservation debate sometimes. Yeah, I think I personally learned a lot as well. Maybe going forwards with season two is um, mm. the attitude in which we in which we tackle things, which is why kind of I think in season two we want with three of us on the on the panel, so to speak. It's like we can get as as a balanced a view as possible, and maybe bringing animals back isn't always the answer. Like maybe we we shouldn't bring bears and wolverine back. Um, but I think Tom Ovenden really helped with that. That really kind of weigh up all the evidence. Um, and come at it so that people can make their own decisions on, on what the stuff that we're saying. Yeah, I think it showcased really nicely that conservation's not easy mm. um, and it's very complicated, it's very nuanced always and it's not this kind of cuddly, lovely, <laughs> out in the wild cuddling animals <laughs> and having a lovely time. It's actually really just tough decision making all the time yeah. and I think that came through really well with both those interviews. And so... In terms of in terms of the filming projects, you know, twenty twenty has been a bit of an interesting year. Challenging, in terms of, yeah, um, unique. Let's say unique. Um, we haven't been able to go out and do as much, you know, um, in the field filming work as we would like to. Um, but we have gotten quite a few interesting little things that we've managed to run out and kind of kind of do. What was your kind of what was the most surprising thing when we went when we went through all those all those filming things? Oh, it was just, I love all of it. I think getting to be out, because this year has been so weird, actually getting out and being in the field is something that we haven't been able to do for a while. Um, But I just think the whole excitement, like you went out a little bit before (laughs) me to scout out the beavers. Mm. um, And it was just that walking through this like section near the river and just seeing all like these pencil shaped trees that the beavers had cut down. And I'm like, they're they're actually here and we have a chance of seeing them and then like the nerds that we are we um went and picked up all the camera traps and just really excitedly in the car just like screamed when we got a beaver (laughs) on the camera trap it was absolutely brilliant (laughs) that was very good fun i think i think the most surprising moment for me was probably actually when we were looking for those boar in the forest of dean and we were crouching down to set this camera trap and we were, you know, way away from anywhere, like at least a mile or so away from the road, deep in the forest. And we heard this massive crashing sound behind <laughs> us. And we stood up so quickly, went, 
Uh, I thought we were going to get charged charged by a boar. Turned out it was a little Bambi, a little baby fallow deer going doink, 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 doink. And we kind of looked at each other like... <sighs> <laughs> that was absolutely <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> I think that's really what I've missed um, in terms of like fieldwork filming uh, this year. But we're very, very excited uh, because we've just booked... Well, not booked. We've just kind of laid the groundwork and started planning uh, a series of very exciting films, um, which Kate is going to be coming along to. Do you want to tell us a bit yeah. about that and what you're really excited about? Yeah, I'm so excited. Hopefully, COVID allowing, we will be heading to Scotland, to the Isle of Mull, to be filming as much wildlife as we possibly can in seven days that we are there. Uh, we've got a lot of exciting options planned. We're hoping to see otters, we're hoping to see birds, we're hoping to see marine life. I cannot wait. I've been <laughs> craving being out in the field and yeah, wandering around looking for wildlife for yeah the last year. And I yeah, I can't wait. I really hope we get to go. Well, we will go. It's just yes, it's a when, absolutely. not on it. Yeah. It's a when, not <laughs> yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah. And for, for those of you who've been watching uh, the Biome Project for quite a while, this might be quite exciting. Me and Emma might be able to tick another muster lid off our list. We just <laughs> finished filming otters down in Pembrokeshire. And we were really excited because we thought, oh, wow, yeah, we're doing really well. We've got two whole mustards. Off the we, we must be nearly there. And then we sat down and realised, oh, I think there's like seven mustards in the <laughs> UK. And we were not doing well at all. So Pine Martins is a possibility up in Mull. We're going to try and find them. You're going to have to follow our stories, follow the content we put out of the Instagram because you might get some Pine Martin updates and us squealing because we've ticked another <laughs> muster lid off the list like the nerds we are. I'm really excited to see, hopefully, see Pine Martins as well because I always think about them when I think about squirrels and I'm excited to see them because obviously we don't really have them here. Well, we don't have them here. And it would be nice to kind of see what things were like before the grey squirrels <laughs> took over and... It's going to be almost like going back in time seeing Pine Martins again. Yeah. I no, I think it's so, we're so, so excited for this. And hopefully we kind of take you guys along with that as well. So we're going to do a lot of kind of vlog style daily, go out in the field, see what we can find type of thing. Um, so really, really hope COVID allowing that we can go do that um, in early, early summer. Um, I mean, I think that just shows you kind of the scope of the amazing stuff that we've been able to cover in, in season one. Um, do you guys want to talk a little bit about what, what season two going to bring? What exciting new stuff are we going to have this year? Yeah, I'm really excited to be part of this season two, um, particularly for the podcast, which we've been busy planning for about a month now, actually. And our kind of theme that we're heading down for the beginning of season two with the podcast is conservation conflicts we're kind of going to tackle big issues relating to people and nature so some human wildlife conflicts and some just more topics where people and nature just are working together or just kind of collide so things like climate change things like trophy hunting zoos the pet trade ethical farming, whaling, so many different things. And I'm really excited to talk about this kind of stuff because that's what I'm really passionate about, where people fit into nature. It's gonna, be, it's gonna be so exciting. And I'm really, really glad that you're with us for the second season because a lot of the kind of the really big issues we tried to tackle in, in the first season, like palm oil. I remember when we were planning palm oil, we work on this, on this Google document to get all our thoughts in one place. And it was pages and pages because <laughs> we were like, we can't do it justice with just the two of us. So I'm really excited to have three of us on board and we can kind of bounce ideas off each other um, and, and really do justice to some of the, the big issues here. Um, and especially some kind of more niche ones I'm really looking forward to. Zoos, the ethical efficacy of zoos, in situ versus ex situ conservation. I'm really looking forward to, to kind of um, exploring that a lot more. Yeah, I think with three people, we'll be able to hopefully have as balanced of an episode as we can where we have completely objective facts and science of what's going on and we'll also offer up our opinions but I think it will be easier to cover some of these really big complicated issues with three people. Yeah and no, I was going to say the same thing just that you can get that breadth of the maybe the pros the cons look at it from all different sides of the argument so like we've said throughout all of season one with everything we're doing as much as this is a a wildlife and kind of animal orientated podcast you can't do conservation without the local people 
And so this particularly, like Kate was saying, it's going to be a lot about human wildlife interactions. Like, can we just interact? Can we coexist? Or is there conflict? Like, I think with three people, we can really cover the like a really balanced viewpoint of that. Uh, yeah, and I think it will be interesting. Some of the topics we're going to talk about are controversial, to say the least. <laughs> yeah. And I think it will be interesting to see what we all think. And as you know, wildlife lovers and conservationists, whether people listeners are in, like surprised by what we think about certain things i think it's going to be a really eye-opening series and on the subject of what listeners think with the second season we're going to try and get much more involved with our audience um so i think every episode we'll try and really push out on our youtube and on our website um ways to engage with you guys so you can tell us what you think um and maybe you know if you've got a particular idea for a really hot animal topic animal conservation topic we can cover it on the podcast that would be really great um and we really want to kind of get the debate going on our platform at least around these issues and kind of understand what everyone thinks about it because it's all very well three people who have you know a massive i don't want to say bias but three people who work and study the natural world um but we want to find, kind of figure out what everyone else thinks at the same time because this is the kind of way that we're going to move forward with these things and solve these really really critical issues no absolutely and it just gets the conversation started i think that's the first step with conservation challenges is making people think a little bit um <laughs> so like in terms of what do you guys have a particularly like a favorite episode you guys are looking forward to doing with the Ooh. season two I, I can't decide. Kate, do you want to go first? Though? I just need to actually think of what we're doing and just because they're all so good. Um, I think at the moment I'm excited to talk about culling because I think season two will be slightly different from season one in this. It will be a bit, there'll be more international episodes, mm-hmm. a slightly less of a UK focus. But I think culling will really bring in the UK and it will be both. It will be global and local. And it will be, I think, quite an interesting topic to show that a lot of these challenges are quite similar everywhere in the world. Um, But some of them are obviously very different in where you are. But we face culling that we have in the UK as a problem or a solution. (laughs) Same in Africa, same in South America. And I think that will be a cool episode that will sort of link in that sort of local wildlife that you guys have done so well on with season one and this more international theme that we're bringing. I'm also excited to talk about the rhino horn trade. Because <laughs> you love your rhinos. I, love, <laughs> I do love rhinos. Um, and the uh, sharks as well, because that's what I studied for my master's. So that's going to be a fun one for me, I think. I, I think I'm on board with the sharks on that one. Yeah, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really interested to kind of explore how through our own um, kind of our social perception of them and how the media talks about them, things like Shark Week on Discovery Channel. Um, I'm really interested to unpack how shark conservation is impacted by the image we have of them. And I'd like to kind of further discuss the kind of biology and ecology of sharks with a view to kind of saying, well, actually, these aren't the kind of maligned killing machines that we make them out to be. I don't, I don't think I've ever watched a shark documentary that comes out of America without them, without the, you know, the narrator saying it's the perfect killing machine. And I'm, I always hear that. And I'm like, it's kind of, you know, it's an organism in its environment. Um, and I'm really interested to kind of explore how that has affected how we treat sharks and how we think of sharks, because I, I can't, I can't remember who said this, but I am quoting someone else, but someone said, um, if sharks didn't eat meat, we'd think they were the most beautiful creatures in the seas. And I kind of thought about it and I was like, Oh, wow. Yeah. So Sharks is an episode I'm really looking forward to. Um, and also, I agree, the the rhino, the rhino episode, um, in terms of, you know, how do we, how do we get around this issue of, of, of poaching for the horns? Do we sell them legally? Do we not? Do we ban everything? How, wh- at what end do you tackle the problem? Is it, is it the poachers on the ground? Is it the big cartels? Um, so yeah, I think those two I know it's a bit annoying of me. I've chosen the same ones as you. <laughs> but I, I think those two I'm going to really look forward to. Um, yeah. What about you, Emma? I've got, I mean, those also, I agree with both of you. Um, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to, I think, the exotic pet trade one that we're going to talk about. Just because social media plays such a big part in, in everyone's lives. And in that episode, we're kind of going to talk about how much is social media sort of responsible 
for the, the people's attitudes towards having exotic pets and that attitude of like if you look up um things about animals almost like the second or third most googled question is like where can i get one as a pet can i mm. hug one can i hold one can i own one it's like what have we created here these wild animals being kept by celebrities i'm kind of yeah curious to explore that one and then also the um the climate change um whole a huge topic to discuss <laughs> but basically kind of what individuals can do organizations whether we need full-on system change governments like it's there's so much that's coming up which i'm very very much looking forward to yeah i'm definitely excited about that we've set ourselves a huge challenge with oh yeah episodes about climate <laughs> so i'm slightly scared but i'm also excited and i think it will be interesting both the what you wrote said about sharks and emma about social media with pets that as content creators to be talking about these slightly darker sides of social media. I think that's going to be quite fun. I'm going to really enjoy that because as much as I recognise that social media is a necessity for conservation in in the modern kind of era, I don't know, are we in an era? In in the modern world, you know, um, and obviously all our content goes out on social media, but in terms of social media for myself, I I really don't like it. It kind of freaks me out. I I try to engage with it on a personal level as little as possible. Um, so it'll be really interesting looking at that kind of paradox. It's so necessary, but has the potential to be so harmful, not just for humans, but also for the natural world as well. So that's that's going to be really exciting. Oh, I can just... I've got so many ideas in my head. I just want to kind <laughs> Me of write too. them I'm down. Like, oh, so much, so much going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very excited. And so going forward in, in 2021, as as we've told you, we've got lots and lots of exciting new content coming out. So we've got the new season of the Biome podcast with the wonderful Kate as a new content producer with us. We're all super excited about that. Um, we've also got new films. As Kate said, we're going up to Mull, being way too ambitious as per usual. <laughs> but you can follow us on social media and you can watch us being stressed out because we can't find any Pine Martins. Um, we've also we've also got another film in the works about beavers. Um, if you watched our last film, we managed to get beavers on the camera trap, but we feel we have unfinished business down in Devon with beavers. Absolutely. We, we didn't see them <laughs> with the light of day with our cameras. Um, and there's so many kind of shots I want to get. I want to get the shot of them gnawing the tree. So we will go down and we will do beavers part two. Um, and we've also got lots and lots of interesting blog posts and written articles and little content bites which are coming out both on our Instagram and on the Biome Project website. So 2021 is hopefully going to be a really big year for the Biome Project and we can't wait to get started. Yeah we're super super excited so stay tuned for season two of 2021 um, with the three of us so we're really looking forward to it. So we hope you've enjoyed this little teaser. We hope you've enjoyed listening about what we're going to put out this year. Um, so we're going to leave you for now. Uh, lots of exciting things to come. If you'd like to check out more of our work, all of our content, both videos and written work, blog articles, social media bites, they're all up on our new website, www.thebiomproject.co.uk. So you can check it all out there. Um, all our films also go out on YouTube, which is Biome by Grizzly. And you can also check us out on social media, which is also by and by Grizzly. And if you'd like to check us out individually, we do lots of exciting things. Emma's got her badger camera traps up at the moment, doing lots of interesting things with that. My traps have all died because it's too cold, but I will get my badger traps up <laughs> soon. And Kate runs the fantastic blog, Let Rhinos Roam, which is talking about rhino conservation um, around the world. So that is Emma Hodson Wildlife on Instagram, Roby Watkinson Wildlife on Instagram, and Kate, what are you? I'm um, conservation underscore Kate on Instagram or let rhinos roam free on Instagram as well. Fantastic. So we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>